gather together to give thanks and praise to our Lord. This morning, if you have a special prayer request or a change of address or phone number, please fill it out on the little uh, white card inside the brown folder. If you have a prayer request that you would like named in today's prayer, pass it to the outside aisle and they will be picked up by the ushers. Again, welcome. Let us stand together and turn to the confession and forgiveness in the front of your hymn book, facing our cross and confessing to our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we abide in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us join in our gathering hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns, hymn number 855.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your spirit, transform us and your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 1. In the days between Jesus' ascension and Pentecost, Peter oversees the process whereby one of the members of the community of believers is chosen to be the twelfth apostle in order to fill the vacancy created by Judas' treachery and death. The reading from Acts chapter 1. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons. And Peter said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit, through David, foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus, for he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. 
So they proposed two. Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Please join in a responsive prayer of Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. The second reading is from the book of 1 John, chapter 5. God has borne the witness to the gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Whoever believes in the Son of God believes in the witness of God and has the promise of eternal life. The reading from 1 John, chapter 5. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In this reading, the church hears Jesus' words on the night before his death. John reports the words of Jesus' prayer for his disciples and for all who would believe in him through their words. The reading from St. John. Jesus prayed, Father, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you have sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. 
Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Invite the students going to the National Youth Gathering to come forward at this time. We're going to collect the noisy offering. So high school students who want to come up today. I know there's more than a few of you present here this morning. Thanks for being such great sports and coming up. All right, so if you're going to the National Youth Gathering, come on forward. We want to say a special thank you today. Adults, you can get out. Big kids, you can get out your uh, pocket change. Students, go ahead and grab one of the noisy offering uh, cans. And remember to make a joyful sound as the coins ring into there. So you can head right up the middle and down the sides, and we might send you out again a second time. We'll see. We'll see what we can shake out of their pockets, huh? All right, we want to thank you very much for all your support for our students going to the National Youth Gathering in Houston. They have raised about seven-eighths of everything that they need, and so you have been very generous in your support, and the community has just opened, uh, opened their hearts so that these young people can go and... Uh, experience this tremendous event. The National Youth Gathering is going to be down in Houston at the end of June, so pray for me in particular while I am uh, away from you. I will keep all of you in my prayers as well, as well. All right, students, once you come on back forward, oh, don't stop making a joyful sound. I mean, it's supposed to be fun, right? Yeah. There you go. Good job, Dan. All right, Tucker. Now, of course, you know it's Mother's Day, so before you go, I'm not going to send the crayons with you, but you can take one of these to doodle on, okay, in the pew, because everybody's got a mother. Have you gotten your mom a card for Mother's Day yet? Now you have. There it is. All right. Happy Mother's Day, and what a blessing, and... Let's go ahead and join our hearts in prayer, okay? All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, our God, we give you thanks for all the young people in our midst. We ask all of your blessings upon their trip to the National Youth Gathering in Houston, that you would give all students safety, that you would give them joy in their time together. We thank you, O Lord, for the blessings that you have poured out upon us, the blessings of family, the blessings of our church family the blessings of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray all these things in his name. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you coming forward today. Well, dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace. From God our Father, the Lord Jesus, our Savior, and from the Holy Spirit, who is so closely present with us that it fills our hearts and gives us life. Amen. This is my children's sermon this morning, but I thought, you know, at some point you do get to be too grown up for a children's sermon, right? But I do want to share it with, with all the adults today. There is no more um, lovely thing than a bear, a mama bear, protecting uh, its cubs. At least it's lovely in theory, but in actual practice, if you happen to be in the neighborhood of a mama bear protecting its cubs, 
uh, you really do wish to be someplace else, don't you? About 12 or 13 years ago, I was out just outside of uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, in the Gravant Wilderness. I was on an elk hunt. It was uh, mid-September, late September. It was a beautiful time of year. The aspens were changing to their gold col color, and of course, the mountains are beautiful no matter what time of year. And my hunting partner and I were, uh, were out one morning. It was about 40 degrees. Um, there was a little bit of clouds, and we were walking along the side of a, a steep mountain. My friend was about 100 yards to my left, and he was about 100 feet below me down the mountain. And of course, the mountain was so heavily forested that you could kind of call out and hear, uh, but you certainly couldn't see one another. And so as we walked around the side of the mountain, uh, again, he's about 100 yards that way, uh, I came across this, this beautiful little watering hole. And I stopped, and I'm standing there, and I'm thinking, my, what a beautiful sight, gorgeous morning, how lovely it is to be in this place. And I looked up, and oh, over there, about at the back of the church, I'd say, you know, probably 30 yards away, I see this great big log, about yay big. And I think to myself, wow, that's quite the log. But what I really noticed was that there was some animal standing there shredding the log with its claws, ripping it up, looking for grubs and bugs and all these kinds of things. And so my next thought was, well, gosh, that must be a bear. It looks like a bear, and it's got that nice hump over the shoulders and a sort of silvery color. And I thought to myself, wow, that's just no bear. That's a grizzly bear. I must have been talking out loud to myself as I was thinking all of these things because at that very same moment, the bear turned over its shoulder and looked at me. And the moment it made eye contact, it ran away at 100 miles an hour straight up the side of the hill. Now, if you've heard it said that a grizzly bear could catch a quarter horse inside the first uh, 100 yards of a race, I will attest to this, I believe it to be true. The animal went up the side of that hill with so much speed and power, it made such a terrible noise as it ran through the forest that my friend, his name was Rich, my friend heard this bear and he thought it was a whole herd of elk. And so he was yelling, run Meyer, run! And I'm thinking to myself, Rich, you're not supposed to run from bears. Besides, this one's running from me. <laughs> he thought that maybe if I ran, I could, I could get a better shot. Well, that was a pretty eventful morning, uh, but it, it sort of settled in to me as I was uh, flying home. Uh, on the plane next to me was a, um, uh, a guide and a bush pilot from the state of Alaska. And so I told him this story. Uh, the weather that we were trying to get through that day was sort of like this morning's. And that guide from Alaska, uh, upon hearing this story, he smiled and he said, well, you know, you can consider yourself fortunate that she didn't have any cubs with her if it was a mama bear, and that in any event, the bear didn't come for you, because you might have had just enough time to pull the pin on the bear spray and spray the bear as it was chewing on me. <laughs> that's, that's how fast they are. That is a, a bit of a long-winded explanation, I apologize, uh, but it illustrates the ferociousness uh, and the tremendous power with which a mother bear would defend her cubs at any cost. It's no place, it's no place to linger and be in between. But if this is how tremendously uh, a bear would defend her cubs, then you can begin to have a little picture of how tremendously, how powerfully, God must defend his children. In today's lesson from the Gospel of John, there in chapter 17, Jesus prays, Father, I have protected them, those whom you have given to me, 
and not one of them has been lost, except for the one who is destined to be lost. Not one of them has been lost, because God is a fierce protector of all children, sons and daughters, boys and girls, men and women, those called by his name. God will let nothing come between his love for you and Jesus Christ. God will seek you out. God will shepherd you. God will go after you. God will keep you. The Lord does not slumber, we read in Psalm 121. The one who watches over you does not slumber or sleep so that the sun shall not strike you by day nor even the moon by night. We know that the Lord is our shepherd. We know that he lays down his life for the sheep. And we know that he is able and has power to take it up again. Not one of them has been lost, Jesus says. Father, protect them in your name. Protect them and keep them. It is a wonder then, isn't it? Why we worry at all? I suppose we would have to say that we worry at least because of this much. Jesus highlights, he declares, he makes it plain that we do not belong to the world. Our home is in another place. The world has hated us because we have received the word of God. We have this word in our hearts, and so we know and we believe and we trust and we confess that even though for a time God's people, the Lord's children, might suffer in this first life, they will not suffer forever. Even though the wicked might seemingly go unpunished for a time or a little while, the Lord will have his way. God has promised to watch over us, protect us, defend us, and keep us. And not one is lost. Like a mama bear, God is a ferocious defender of his children. And he will never leave your side. Peace be with you, sisters and brothers in Christ. And let it be said, happy Mother's Day. Amen. Let's rise and join our voices in singing hymn number 785, When Peace Like a River.
Let us now confess together our belief in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare our hearts for prayer. Rejoicing in the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray for the witness of the church, the wholeness of creation, and all those in need. O oh God, we give thanks for the church, for those called to worship together and to serve together. We know that you watch over us all and protect us as you protect your children. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. nourish the soil of your earth, holy God, Bless the trees planted by the water and bless the seeds planted by birds and our hands. Bring forth fruit in due season. Lord, in your mercy, we pray today for our mothers. We pray for our families for all of those who care for one another and reach out to mother others. Dear God, what a blessing. Give all of us, all families, rest and time together and healing and wisdom and strength. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who are homeless, who are naked and hungry and imprisoned and abandoned or sick. We pray for all of those in our midst, in our family, who long for healing. We pray for Debbie and Mel and Dean and Dave and Yeshilla, and Doug, and Wanda, and Verge, and Shar. For Patty, for Jameson, for Isaac, for Mark. Yet rest your healing hand upon them and give them rest and assurance of the power of healing. We pray prayers of sympathy for those who walk through the dark valley. We pray for Dean Dunn and his family and friends, for Jay and Vicki and Jane and John and the children, the grandchildren, we pray for all of Dorothy's dear, dear friends. We give thanks for her life and her service and for you, O oh God, who is holding her now. 
We pray prayers for the family of Florence. We ask you to watch over Tom and Bill and their wives and their children and their grandchildren and all the family and friends. Be with them as they do to celebrate her life and give her over to your arms. Lord, in your mercy, we pray prayers of sympathy for the family and friends of Stella who passed away this last Sunday. We pray for all the family that will gather together tomorrow to celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and remembering the faith of Stella. Lord, in your mercy, you give us eternal life in your Son. When doubt and fears arise, give us peace in the resurrection promise. Sanctify us in your truth and unite us with all the saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All this we ask in the name of your dear Son, as together we say, Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share the peace of the Lord with our brothers and sisters in Christ. God's peace be with you. Now we continue our worship as we give of ourselves, our time, our talents, and our treasures. Let us worship the Lord.
Let us pray. Be known to us, O Lord, in the breaking of the bread, as you were made known to the disciples. Receive these gifts and the offering of our lives, that we may be your risen body in the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times, in all places, give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Feast is ready and all are welcome. Come now.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of heaven to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to Jesus' resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world through the same Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Let us join together in our sending hymn, Sent Forth by God's Blessing, hymn number 547. and thanksgiving to honor to Christ and his name that we should Please be seated. Briefly, we want to highlight a few announcements for you today. We do invite you to take your bulletin with you. There's many announcements. Um, there's a lot happening, and we invite you to take that home and remember everyone in prayer there on page 6. If you're visiting this morning, welcome. Please grab one of the bags on your way out of church. If you like donuts, and who doesn't like donuts, you can put in an order. Alex Chihawk is out there right now, ready to take your orders. Wave your arm, Alex. He's way at the back there. And you can order as many Krispy Kremes as you want. Vacation Bible School is coming up. We, uh, we've got registrations out in the hallway on the orange flyers. If you want to register online, you can do that too at the church website. So make sure you sign up every kid that you know, okay? It doesn't matter whether you're the legal guardian or not, right? Have them come anyway. And you can sign up to help us out, too, as an adult. Uh, we are looking for some help, and it's always a tremendous joy. Baccalaureate service is next week at the 815 service, so you can look forward to that, and we say congratulations to all of our graduates. It's going to be a busy weekend for many reasons. Uh, next Saturday and Sunday, uh, not the least of which is the Wiederholt auction is going to be held on Saturday, May 19th at 11 a.m. We do need some help, though, setting up on Friday and doing some general cleanup work. Uh, so if you can help out at all during the day on Friday, Saturday, or after church on Sunday, it's very much appreciated. Many hands make light work, right? So we hope that you'll join us. And then about a week and a half from now, on the 23rd, if you've participated in music in any way, shape, or form at St. John's in the last year, 
you're invited to the ministry, music ministry potluck. Boy, that's a mouthful. And I'm sure the food that's going to be there that night is going to be delicious. So we invite you to that, to bring a dish to share. And we invite you at this time to please stand for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.